Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we'll be talking about circular motion and deriving the formula acceleration is equal to v squared divided by r using vectors, guys. So put down today's title, it's going to be circular motion, the derivation of acceleration is equal to v squared over r for circular motion. Okay, so let's start off with the following diagram. Here we have a circle. Okay, so here is our circle. And we're going to just draw uh, the origin of the circle, right bang in the centre. Here is the origin of the circle, there, O. We're going to pick a point on the circumference of the circle here. First of all, along the circumference, an object will be moving around, exhibiting circular motion. So let's draw some arrows. So the object's going to move around this direction, all the way around over here. Uh, right now, um, we'll draw a path from the origin to this point over here. We're going to call this, obviously, the radius of the circle. The velocity at this point will be across. So the velocity of this object will be a tangent over here. Let's call this one V1. Let's draw another point, let's say over here. Yeah, there we go. And let's also connect that to the origin. Okay, and that point will also be the radius here. And over here, the velocity will still be at a tangent going down here. Is going to be v2. Have you this? Right, so that's the velocity at those two different points here. Now I'm just talking about the green part now, the green part. So we have right now the radius um, going down here and the radius going up over here. Yeah, and they're joined by this curved path over here. Here we go. So here's our curved path going across here. Okay, so this, guys, is obviously still r. This is still r over here. Both of them are still r. We're going to call the angle between them, both of them in the circle, theta. So it's theta over here. There we go, theta over here. Happy with this? Right, we're also going to construct a triangle using the velocity. So look, this velocity, let's take it, let's draw it across over here. So there we go, this is v1. And v2 is going down, we're just going to shift it and start it off from here. There we go, v2 over here. Okay, now I'm going to connect V1 and V2 together. So these two points over here, these two points. As V1 and V2 are vectors, this distance here will be equal to the change in velocity between those two points here. So that will be equal to the change in velocity. The top one now, we are also going to analyze now. Right, this curve, obviously it's a curve right now if theta is quite large, but what happens when theta is quite small? So if we make theta really, really small, what happens to the curve? Well, we can say that curve will become a straight line. So that curve, when theta is very small, will become a straight line. So this gets replaced over here with a straight line connecting them both. Happy with this? That's only when theta is very, very small. So let's put that down here. So this, we are going to assume theta is equal to very small. And therefore, we've now gone from, it was an arc before, now we've now said it's going to be the same as approximately equal to a straight line. A straight line over here. Wonderful. Now, from here, guys, we're going to talk about this part over here. Right, so we know that this distance over here, we can work out using the velocity and the time. So we know that velocity is equal to distance over time. OK, so therefore we can say this distance over here to move from there to there will be equal to the velocity times by the change in time over here. So the velocity times by the change in time. Why? If you rearrange that formula, velocity times by time will give you that distance here. Think about it. It's moving with velocity over a period of time. That's why it's equal to V delta T. So this bit is equal to V delta T over here. Wonderful. Now, look, guys, we have two triangles, guys, and because... They're similar, especially because theta is the same in both. So the theta will be the same in both. If you take out a piece of paper and draw it, this diagram using vectors, you'll find that to be true. So theta will be the same in both cases here. Right, so now we have two equivalent triangles. We can say that the ratio between some of their sides will be the same. Right, so let's look at um, the velocity one over here. Let's take this one, delta v, and divide it by v over here. So delta v divided by v, okay, this one over here. That will be equal to, at this point, it's going to be V delta T divided by R. 
Right, wonderful. So, look, guys, what's happened here. So, some of you might say, well, where's that V1 gone? Well, that is the, still the same as this velocity. The magnitude of it will still be the same, so the magnitude. So, therefore, we're saying V1 is equal to V in this case. Yeah, because the magnitude will be the same. Right, so now we're over here. We can say that delta V over V is equal to V delta T divided by R. Okay, right. Now, from here, let's take the delta T down. So, we're going to have delta V, take the delta T down over here, divided by delta T. And moving this v up to there will be equal to v squared divided by r right now. And we know that the change in velocity divided by time, that is the same as the acceleration. So that's equal to a is equal to v squared divided by r over here. And then we can now finish off. And we have now proved that the acceleration is equal to v squared divided by r using vectors, guys. So obviously this is in the circular motion topic, guys, and make sure you can do this yourself. And look, I drew the triangles first and then I said they were equivalent to each other. You've got to be able to do that yourself, though. And take a piece of paper, guys, just try out the same thing. Obviously cover it up and then go back and forth just to test your understanding. Okay, so quick recap from the top. So here we had the circle, we had the radius at two different points, and then took that out and constructed a triangle. We had an arc at the start, but then we said for angles of feet are very small, that becomes a straight line. And that value of the straight line will be equal to V delta T. Why? Because displacement is equal to velocity times by time. Then I took the two velocities and constructed another triangle. Now we notice the separation between them is going to be delta V. Then I looked at similar parts of each triangle because they're equivalent. And we said that delta V over V is equal to V delta T over R. Then I rearranged it and had delta V over delta T will be equal to V squared over R. And therefore, we worked out that the acceleration is equal to V squared over R for circular motion. And that's it for another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep my channel going. Goodbye and good luck and have fun learning about circles.